Okay, now we're gonna talk about handling. And by handling, I don't mean race car handling, which 99.99% of us will never do anyway. What we're gonna talk about is how the car handles normally on the road. So you can go to YouTube and then there are lots of videos explaining what camber is, what caster is, and all of this stuff. But what we're gonna be talking about is a bit more practical. How to know if your car needs alignment or not, and how to check if the alignment shop did a proper and correct job after you have it aligned. So, so if they did a sucky job, you can always tell them that, hey, car's not aligned, it's a back job. The easiest test that anybody can do, actually you do it unconsciously, you always have one hand on the wheel to keep the car going straight because as you can see here, we're going to go straight. The second that you let go of the steering wheel, and we're about to crash into the Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know your car needs alignment. And that's also the test after you have your car have alignment done in the alignment shop, you let it go. If it tracks straight, then job's well done. If it doesn't, then back job. Actually for alignment, the biggest factor that they adjust to make the car go straight or not is toe in and toe out. <laughs> not, not camber per se. Camber relates more to how the car turns, which we'll explain in a bit. We're gonna explain the terms with actual wheels rather than a diagram because having actual stuff is a lot easier to visualize. The most common that you hear is camber alignment. That simply means labas o pasok yung wheel. So this is negative camber, this is positive camber. Almost all cars now don't have positive camber anymore. A lot of the cars now, when you buy it stock straight from the factory, have a very, very slight negative camber, both on the front and in the back. Why they do this? Because when you have a car that's negatively cambered and then when you corner, the wheels actually straighten out. So we're gonna exaggerate it a bit. So you have a car that says negative camber like this. When you corner, weight shifts out, the wheel gets straighter so there's more grip on the road. And when you turn the other way, the same thing happens. Weight is on this wheel, this wheel gets straighter. So there's more grip on this one. So that's what camber is. The next question is, hindi ba mapuputput yung gulong ko dahil naka negative camber ako? The answer is no. <laughs> The amount of camber is very, very slight. Usually, a degree is a lot. So it's anywhere from half a degree to one degree. That's the stock setting of, of almost all cars now. Uh, there are some rare cars like Mazda 3s have about a degree and a half, sometimes two degrees of negative camber at the back. And by the way, that's what makes the car handle so well because of that extreme negative camber at the back. If you hear and hang around with car people often enough, you'll hear na napuput put yung loob ng gulong ko. It's because of if you have too much negative camber like this, only this part is on the ground. This part here does not rub the ground. So the end result is you get inside tire wear, which means it's napuput put sa loob, sa loob. And since you're a cheapskate, you rotate mo na lang yung goma para maput put naman yung labas. <laughs> But as we showed earlier, if your car goes straight or not when you let go of the steering wheel, a lot of it has to do with toe in and toe out. And then for this one, we need to have a shot from above the tire. <laughs> this is toe in. This is toe out. Again, the stock setting is almost always slightly, slightly towed in from the factory. And it's pretty easy to see. If you have an old uh, Transformers toy that with one wheel wobbled like that, obviously it will not go straight. If it's wobbled like this, it will also not go straight. If it's straight like this, with very, very slightly pointing inward, then this will actually go straight when you roll it. Having the opposite of like that, this will also go straight, but it will be very wiggly. So most of the adjustments when you're having a car aligned to go straight is actually the toe in and toe out. The third term that you will hear is caster alignment. Uh, most of the cars now, we don't really adjust this anymore because there's not much to adjust and adjusting it doesn't really affect anything unless you're racing. So let's forget about that one. So the two important things to remember are toe in, toe out, and then camber alignment for tire wear. But once again, the best test, if your alignment job is great or not, let go of the steering wheel.
That advice also same goes for people who install lowering springs. They always ask, do you need an alignment after you install lowering springs or any other suspension work? Same principle goes. Let go of the steering wheel. If your car go runs straight, you don't need an alignment. If it veers left and right at Kumakabig, then you need an alignment. That's how handling is done for us normal people 99.99% of the time and that's all what we need to be concerned about. Yes, you can have lowering springs, better shock absorbers, but the thing is for normal people driving on normal roads, handling is how straight your car goes. And when you ask it to turn, and it turns and it's not malikot, it's not all over the road. That is handling for the common person. <laughs>